losses, which inflicts heavy burdens on Malaysia's taxpayers. Today, our speakers will discuss the question of reform. Spending and planning in public policy areas such as housing, transport, education and health all provide opportunities for the government to show either a more interventionist or more market-led approach. And IDEAS hopes to engage with these ministries to share evidence of best practice from around the world. In terms of government-linked investment companies and government-linked companies, a major rethink of their role does not seem to be on the cards, even though some responsibilities have been transferred. Many new appointments have been made to their boards, but it will take a while before hopes for true independence and competence on the one hand, or accusations of political patronage on the other hand, bear fruit. As an independent director of two public listed companies myself, I'm well aware of the onerous fiduciary duties, and I hope that those in GLICs and GLCs will be equally meticulous and no longer immune from the protection of political cover. The role of regulators, including Bank Nagara, will also be crucial in helping to determine how competitive our market will be. I have already mentioned the role of taxes, and we will be eagerly watching out for hints of tax reform that will encourage growth. On trade and foreign investment, while the position on China seems quite clear and quite well regarded, the position on the CPTPP seems less clear, though we think it will be beneficial to trade overall. So currently, Malaysia ranks 65th out of 159 countries in Fraser Institute's Economic Freedom of the World Index. But soundings suggest this may drop considerably in the next edition, which is being released soon, with Hong Kong and Singapore taking the top two spots as usual. However, we are a relatively healthy 23rd out of 137 countries in the World Economic Forum's World Competitiveness Index. So watch this space next year. Ladies and gentlemen, hopefully some of the facts and statistics I have mentioned will enable progress to be tracked in future editions of this speech. For it is the purpose of this liberalism conference to provide insight into how the country is performing on these four principles. I began with a quote from our first young Diputuan Agum, stressing his profound belief in our constitutional democracy. Indeed, it is when all of our institutions and citizens come together with a common confidence in our supreme document that our potential can be unlocked. I conclude with a dream to see better citizenship education, whether in schools, universities, and through public institutions, playing a role to help create a shared, though of course contestable, understanding of the values that inspired our nation, our constitution, and our Rukun Nagara. I hope we will all play our part towards this goal. Thank you very much. <laughs>